Raj. Thanks, Ernie. We had a question about the watch personnel showing a balance of males and females, which is sometimes they're noting, sometimes the robotics team can be male dominated, but it's one of the goals of OET is to. Can we pause for a second, Jake? Yeah. Um, that crinoid on the sponge that we just passed. Can we take a look at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, w the purple one. Oh, that's a bamboo coral. I'm just kidding. It's not a sponge. There's another oh, sponge. Oh, actually, it's right on here. bowls. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Huh. I you think, think that's that different than the purple one we got before. I think so. And I think this is also on the hit list. On the hit list. Definitely. Definitely All right. Jonas, yeah. is that the ship? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Bridge now. Hold position. We're gonna get this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a grab and go. Well, also we have a watch shift, so. Uh, um. Okay. Right. I'm gonna full rack back there. Yeah. As long as you're stable. I'll do I keep an eye on that sonar though. Yeah. Slurps three, four, or five, six are open. Roger. Full rack back. Full rack back, Raj. Okay, we're on flush. You want to look down to the slurp? Yeah. Sorry. All right. going to be going through a shift change here in the next few minutes. It's been great spending our evening with all of you. Keep your questions coming. I'm going to pass off my chair to Kelly. All right, you want to zero the section there? Oh, I'll get it since you're fine. Yeah, just one second. Let me know if you need me to press any buttons. All right. Reg. And we're going to go to, to six. Okay. I'm gonna keep an eye on that sonar. Oh, it's stuck. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, we're okay. Never mind, we're gonna go to three. Three? Oh. Okay. It's stuck again. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, guys, we're stuck on the sample jars right now. That's okay. No. Oh, come on. Almost one there. One more, one more, one more. Well, the thing is, the ship has already stopped. Try? Yeah, if you want to try. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, getting well. stuck on. Getting stuck on the one. And then stuck on one and flush. Oh. Oh, oh we got it. All nice. right. All right. All right. Suction coming on. Yeah, let's do like thirty or forty percent. Yeah. Forty percent. Dave, you wanna go ahead and push on in there, please? You wanna look a little bit to the crinoid, Jake? Yeah. All right. Let's 
mungkin What are we at there? Forty percent. I put it. Go ahead and increase it. Oh, he's fighting. He's fighting. Nice, Jay. All right. All right. Nice. Pull right there, please. Oh, I didn't put it all the way. Oh. All right. Well, you wanna look down a bit there, Jay? Need that touch screen. Nice right. work, he's guys. He's in there. Good job. Zeroed it for you there. Nicely done. Nice. And then you want to go ahead and change it to the flush because sometimes they have a tendency to swim out of the bins. Yeah, you want to? Yeah. If the, if the jars want to spin again, let's see. There you go. Yeah, it's getting stuck. What's the sample number on that? Is it 6-9? Yeah, go forward six, a bit nine. and then spin. Twenty eighteen. All right. All right, handing over. Good evening, everyone. We just did a watch change, and we now have our nighttime 12 to 4 watch on here. 
we're still getting a little bit settled. Um, but thanks for joining us. We're happy to have you. Ready? Two, three, zero. Making our way up the ridge. Yeah. So we're trying to cover ground here. Yeah, so the idea is to make it to this waypoint 12 on our watch. And Steve, please correct me if I am saying anything wrong. Um, and it is about 1.3 kilometers away. So if we keep our 0 0.2, not pace, it should take three hours and 22 minutes. Okay, great. Well, that is just slightly less than the time of our watch. That's so what I was add a form. sample in there and <laughs> strict schedule. <laughs> yeah. Kate, I'm counting on you. <laughs> I'm just happy we made it to the right ridge. So, oh, yeah. I'm just not going to zoom. <laughs> no. no. That's uh, all I want. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll be it. We'll be. Okay. So yeah, go for it. Two three zero, Roger. Bridge nav. Sounds good. Can we move one hundred meters bearing two three zero? Thank you. Go for Zoom. We'll just get this patch of lots of good stuff. Yeah. Ooh, my favorite Nice sponge. to see some life again. Last we some were here, things. we were in blue water, so. Are these the macaroni sponges? Yeah, there's some macaroni, uh, there's some crinoids. Yep. Golden corals as well. We've got some bamboos in the foreground. Uh, precious corals off the left side. Hemichorellium. The typical cast of characters for seamount summits. Well, what's going on? Are those? What's that one? Oh, I see. This one? Yeah. Nice. I thought it was a sponge stock. Hemichorellium with a uh, couple of snake stars. Snake stars? Ooh. Yeah, the common name for those uh, brittle stars over there. Oh, cool. Probably in the Asteriscomatidae family. Okay. All perfectly positioned on that colony to have maximum separation distance. Almost like their sea star parents put them all in corners. Just <laughs> to not fight with their siblings. <laughs> they could very well be siblings. True family tree right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're now on the, the second part of Seabound F. Uh, when we were first on watch, uh, we were on the first part of Seabound F. Viewers, you've been watching, but for us, <laughs> we left during a blue water, mid water tow. Um, so 
it's nice to be back on a summit here looking at life again. Um, so I have a question. So these are these are now like sort of the breakable type of corals, right? These are sort of more rigid as opposed to more like compliant and bendy. Yes, they are. Uh, Go for zoom. Definitely the more fragile uh, type of pink coral we see down here. Although we've seen bubblegum corals as well. Uh, these are definitely going to be the ones that shatter. Why? Why are they like that? Their skeleton is, is dense um, compared to uh, the more bendy corals. Uh, so they have a solid skeleton that's made of uh, calcite, one of the calcium carbonate minerals. And uh, if, if you were to basically touch them, uh, they would crack in pieces. Wow. Uh, since they don't have a lot of, um, you know, compared to sister groups where you know their skeleton might be less dense, they're more porous, or they might have nodes or things like that that might give some flexibility to them. It's a solid uh, calcium carbonate coral. So sometimes they're given the name precious coral uh, because they're they're skeleton can be used to you know carve things like gemstones but um, okay, go ahead. not necessarily the ones from the deep sea here the skeleton is much uh -huh. more fine than what we find in shallower waters definitely looks like they can support a lot more of those associates or there's a lot more brittle stars in these yeah given that structure So our current is um, a little bit stronger now, definitely coming from the west-ish. Hmm. Northwest-ish? Uh, yes. I haven't, I believe you, I haven't no, refined just, my measurement. That's what my brain. Okay. Go for it's zoom. telling me, suggests that should probably be coming from the northwest, but that's interesting that it's coming straight okay. to the west. I haven't, yeah, I need probably to move around a little more to refine mm. it, but some something like that. Yeah. Got some euplectelid sponges in the lower right. Something in the euplectelidae. A C pen in front. Maybe even euplectella itself. Uh, oh yeah, that is a C pen. Oh cool. Not quite seeing Maybe? what you're looking Maybe. at. Lower uh lower right? Uh I think that might be a baby Walteria sponge. Oh okay. Oh. A baby. Or something else. It could be a, a coral that's just attached to the rock, just very small. I think it'll look. Yeah. Go for zoom. It looks like it's in oh, a sponge. It, yeah. Somehow it looks like it's in the sand, though. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I guess it must be a sponge. Mm. Cool yeah, tough, tough, tough to tell sometimes when they're that small. Uh, corals and sponges alike, they don't really have a lot of characters. You know, maybe you can get to a family based on their uh, characteristics, like how they attach to the seafloor. Certain families have very distinctive ways of attaching whether it's a bundle of fibers or they glue themselves to the rock. Go for Zoom. We do have, um, if anyone was curious about seeing... You can push in a bit more. Uh, we do have from the last cruise a very nice precious coral piece. Oh, there is a black coral too, left-hand side. Oh, the Stic green? Stichopathies, yep. Oh, oh yeah. It's everyone's favorite. Stichopathies. 
Not stick Named like. for its stick-like shape? Yeah, not stick-like. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> A twirly uh, stick. I'm so, like, stuck on that for some reason. <laughs> okay. So that group is currently being revised, uh, stickopathies. So it might not be in the genus stickopathies anymore. Um, could be updated into something called aphanostichopathies based on genetics. Uh, we found some new data that suggests that it probably belongs to a different group, uh, not like Go for the zoom. other stichopathies, which I think were originally described from mesophotic depths or shallower water. Like sponge. Okay, go ahead. No shortage of rocks here. <sighs> Uh, our next rock collection isn't for a few hundred meters vertical. Okay. I think the goal. Oh, oh hey, buddy. Hello. <laughs> Midwater friend. You can give him a zoom. Try and keep him in. Oh, it's nice to get a little time just to look at these. We see them zoom by all the time. I know. But to watch them swim like they that is really They're amazing like, swimmers, huh? Yeah. Oh, swimmerettes. Swimmerettes. Huh. Wow. Shout out to Kim. <laughs> so cool. Okay. Go on. We're also seeing these kind of curly Q, single stalked, uh, unbranched whips. Um, these are probably Candidella gigantea, which is a pretty characteristic seamount coral at these depths for this part of the Pacific. And some bathypathies as well. All these Chrysogorgia colonies are loaded up with all kinds of associates. You can see that all these bases too. That just oh corals yeah, corals have been here for a long time. Um, but all the, there's tons of associates in these. Usually some uh, crabs, and shrimp. Um, Go for zoom. But all of these colonies have one or more associates on them, or and then even some of them that don't. You can see that one has a shrimp. Okay. See and what if we you can get. Go, go down a bit. There's another. Oh, down. Yeah, sure. That's dead. That has a very distinctive type of squat lobster on it. Oh. oh wow. Yeah. You can push in. Wow! Look at how long its pinchers are. Yeah. Looks like a chirostylid. Style it. Okay, go on. I'll put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, that wasn't a coral. It was a it was a hydroid that was on. So you find distinct uh, associates paired with pretty distinct looking coral morphologies. It's always a question about how they find each other. Um, you know, especially for some of the ones that have very specialized high fidelity associates. Is it some sort of chemical signature that the associates are looking for in the larval stage? Um, or, you know, perhaps they don't disperse that far at all. Let's put it up here in the event log. The chat's a little slow. I don't really see like squat lobsters walking from one coral to another ever, do we? Some predation going on right there. Go for zoom. Catching that in the scene of the crime. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Hypasteria. Sea star. Grazing down a bamboo coral colony. Grazing makes it sound more benign. Can you go <laughs> wide now? Murder. Yeah, murder. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, could, again. it could be grazing um, in that, you know, oftentimes we don't know if this animal predator usually eats the whole thing. Uh, typically, they might eat just the lower portions of the branches and then just say, I'm done, and uh, climb right up, back off. So it, sometimes they might eat the whole thing. It's, uh, it's not clear what is driving their motivations, but probably hunger. <laughs> this, one one. this one looks like it's eating the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's eating yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's really going for it's it. A yellow thing on its back. You see I that? I was wondering. Yeah. yeah. Could be some sort of associate organism for that critter itself. Okay, go on. A lot of um, sea stars have associates unto themselves, like um, some polychaete worms can be found in and around them. One of the species that we don't typically see, sometimes, very, very rarely, maybe as we get shallower, are these things called homolid crabs. And uh, if you you were with us during our journey down to Helen and Baker and Jarvis, uh, Kingman and Palmyra, you might have seen these in past years. They're really cool associates of corals and sponges that have these modified um, back legs uh, that allows them to pick up bits of coral and sponge and kind of use it as a little hat or a little umbrella oh. to hide themselves, either physically, Go for zoom. mechanical um, camouflage, which is not, not the best <laughs> camouflage, but it also could mask them chemically. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. What was the name of it? It's their crabs in the family Homolidae. Homolidae. H O M O L I D A E. And uh, yeah, we don't haven't found any uh, up up here. Maybe a bit further south. Okay, go on. So even though we're tropical, we're not necessarily only seeing all uh, all the tropical species. We're still seeing kind of this characteristic Hawaiian fauna. Lots of hemichorellium, grimnoids, these types of things. I'm sure there are homolid crabs around here, which is probably too deep for them. Bridge, nav. Some black corals. I think we were calling those heteropathies or trisopathies in the past. One five zero meters bearing two three zero. It's like ferraid sponges. So there's a couple different types of ferraid sponges, kind of these stocked ferraids, and then these more bushy ones. Macaroni and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apologies to our scientists ashore. My chat is still coming up online. This one looks like uh, very interesting. Almost it had like it was growing in this plane. And it yeah, said, it changed its mind totally. Yeah. And then it started growing zoom? in that plane. Which, it, you know, these corals are often finely attuned to the directionality of the flow. Um, it makes better sense for particle capture efficiency if you're oriented perpendicular to the flow because you have a better surface area to okay, go disturb. Um, most often what these things do is they'll orient perpendicular to the flow and then um, use the turbulence induced by the uh, their polyps on the flows to slow down the water and if you slow down the water you can more efficiently capture particles like marine snow and other food bits out of the water 
that's kind of the idea that they're all organized across the prevailing current. Okay. But there are a lot. Yeah. I feel like we're headed directly into the current right now. So our heading is two four two two five zero or something like that. Okay. I imagine it'll start to wrap around a little bit as you get to the summit too. Yeah, there's good diversity here. I think you could sample, you could fill her. Do you had a oh, fish in the lower left? Go for zoom. Oh, just sorry. out of frame. What, what's that? There's a little fish over there. Oh, okay. Let's see what kind. Oh, yep. That's a little fish. Eel. Yeah, cusk eel. Is that the only fish that we've seen? When we see them, they typically are cusk eels. Or do you remember um, any others? Cusk eels, Sinephobranchid eels. Um, we've seen halosaurs as well. Halosaurs, um, yes. Okay. The other day, um, I think it was, must have been the second dive. Um, on soft sediment, you often see different types of fishes. We saw an animal called a um, bathysaurus. Very Let's say uh, attractive looking fish, very <laughs> distinctive face. I'll let you Google that one. Okay. Bathysaurus? Bathysaurus, yeah. Bathysaurus. Common name would be like a deep sea lizard fish or something. Oh, yeah. That is not the cutest fish. <laughs> well, Go for Zoom. Its mother loves it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all that matters. Everything's cute in its own way. Chrysogorgia colony. Maybe with the shrimp. The shrimp. Yep. And then some sponges. Macaroni. Yeah. Okay, go wide. Should give a geology update, I suppose. Um, looks like we're going through here. These look to be combinations of boulders and pillow basalt uh, features, some cracked open pillows, maybe a little bit of talus material. Anyway, back to the fishes, yeah. Um, what else? So we've seen lots of chonicops. Uh, Everyone's favorite. Yep. Uh, a little bit higher up, we've seen some of the small grenadier fish, like Kumba, the genus Kumba. Uh, this is a really silly looking sponge here. Yeah, take a look at that. Go for zoom. You know, this is, um, this one's pretty tortured. Uh, this actually looks something similar to what we had seen on our dive at Tamana Southeast. Um, we saw this very distinctive sponge with these kind of, it's not the right term for it, but like almost like vascularized channels. It does Great look imagery. like that. It's like almost webbed through there. And you can push stable. in further. Seems really stable. All these zooms are really valuable because uh, folks who are annotating this video We'll have a easier time to identify things. If you have a good zoom on them. Okay, go wide. Even better if there was a collection of such a thing, but um, we try to do our best, uh, kind of get the most bizarre, 
morphologies for collection. That's another one right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any zoom more slurp jars do we have open? Just curious. Three. Okay. Zoom bank is empty. Yeah. yeah. Gonna be a pretty fast turnaround after this dive. Oh, some nice Aridigorgia. Esperellus. This this was this particular coral zoom? here was quite dominant on the last cruise. Oh, well, here I was looking at the sponge because it's oh. so charismatic. But okay, coral, right. Roger. Okay. I, I guess I guess we can look at the sponge. <laughs> you can go ahead and zoom on that coral there, video. I think this is Atlanticella, a type of glass sponge. You can push in further. It's the coral right below the lasers. Roger that. Didn't even see it. <laughs> okay, yeah, this guy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we were we were calling that Trisopathies earlier. Trisopathies or heteropathies? It could be okay, go wide. Convinced either way, but I think uh, we had convinced ourselves it was probably Trisopathies. But we did get a collection of that on the last cruise, so oh, great, very valuable. This is an amazing spot. Wow. Yeah, there's so since we got on watch, <laughs> it's just been like nonstop. Oh, yeah, we're going to take a I want to take a look at that large bushy thing coming up at 12. Oh, okay. Yes, we will definitely do that. It's pretty distinctive. Go for zoom. Lots of primno, it's difficult to ID here. I think this is our Acanthagorgia. That this is awesome. Yeah, observed look at that. a bit deeper. Wow. Yep. Lots of associates on here. This is one of those species we typically find shallower than about 2,000 meters. Uh, actually, could we get a tighter zoom? Oh, yeah. That's Best zoom. you can do for oh. me. Okay. Want me to come wide and you can get in close? Uh, you have time. Yeah. Go for it. There you go. Okay, let me see here. Okay, go for zoom. Yep, I'm going to stick with that ID. Okay, go wide. So much here. Yeah, so many of these pink corals, it's so pretty. I think we've captured, you know, between samples on the last cruise and this cruise, I think we've captured a lot of the this uh, diversity from the acanthogorgids as well as the plexorids. Anytime we've come across them, we started to sample them, which is a good idea. Um, so I think we have a, we can get a good idea on that one.
Say again what that yellowish brown one was that we just zoomed on. I think it was an Acanthogorgid, which is a family. Um, and there are really there's one big genus called Acanthogorgia within it, but there's a su several smaller taxa also within that group. But Acanthogorgia is kind of the more characteristic one we see at these depths. Lots of, uh, we're starting to see some bubblegum coral as well. Oh, there's one of our grenadier oh, yeah. friends. Go for zoom. Wait, go ahead. It's funny, he didn't like the zoom either. Yep. I said the quick zoom. It's an interesting yeah. thing right here. Go ahead and zoom. Sort of a thin sponge. Yeah, and Lenicella. Okay, go ahead. We also sampled at Lenicella on the last cruise. We sampled a lot of sponges. We're not too far from our previous expedition, maybe a couple days transit, but Biogeographically, that's pretty close. I don't think we would see any really appreciable difference in the community from the South, Wentworth, South Wentworth Seamounts out to the site. Go for zoom. Yep. Okay. Pretty well colonized sponge. Yeah, that's pretty neat. could start a game now what's going to be the dominant coral when we get up top Ooh, i feel like you're gonna win that yeah i think <laughs> so too but i'm willing to play i, I won't i won't vote you go oh, i was gonna say you go first go for zoom yeah there we go Ooh, what is that a savannah dandelion savannah for cut yep. loose that's right oh it's it is tethered yeah you can see it still huh yeah just one though Oh, wow. Yep. Just trying to find a new piece of real estate. I feel for you, buddy. It's tough. <laughs> it's a tough market. Tough is housing it, market. Is it retracting? So, uh, let it go. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's reeling in? Oh. What? Wow. Yeah. And it's what? releasing some. It's releasing. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like something. shedding something. Is it just pooping? Oh. Or is it different yeah. than that? What? I've never, never seen one do that in real time. Wow. Wow. They must send something. That was cool. Yeah, big, loud, yellow bus. <laughs> <laughs> Look at yeah. it go. Oh, my gosh. See, You see what it's releasing? Oh, yeah, yeah. I see that. Hmm. Okay, I got to go. I don't want to, though. This is amazing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Go wide. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's, you know, it, we know that these siphonophores are made up of a lot of smaller uh, zoids that have very specific functions um, and together they form the siphonophore it's a colonial animal it was reeling itself in that was amazing i've only seen the spider do anything like that yeah so that was a colonial organism that's right 
it seems like do, do the different organisms that make it up have different functions? They do, yeah. Some of them are specifically associated with propulsion, some of them for um, defense, some for uh, digestion, and some for uh, reproduction. Reminds me of an ant colony. Huge piece of sponge rubble here too. Oh no, maybe a pillow instead? Yeah, pillow. Oh well, yeah, look, this one's all cracked open on the yeah, left hand side. Neat. Yeah. I'm surprised to see, this doesn't seem all that stable to me, certain parts of this, but we're still seeing a lot of these hemichorellium, which could suggest that, you know, corals that grow here are growing fast, faster than um, deeper down the slope, uh, such that they're able to grow quickly before the substrate fails over time. And that there's different size classes of colony kind of suggests that there's active recruitment going on here which is always good signifying healthy reproductive uh, coral and sponge community I've never seen a dandelion siphonophore do anything other than just be suspended there, like totally inanimate. That was very, very cool. I didn't think they did much. Take a look at this uh, coral there. Yeah. That was a, it's a bit of an odd. Go for zoom. Morphology. Christmas tree morphology? Yeah. <laughs> It's probably one of these Chrysogorgids, um, you know, these bushy bottle brush like ones. Uh, this one's completely taken over by zoanthids, a different type of um, cnidarian that ha does have some coral relatives um, within its group, sometimes called the gold and or uh, gold corals, especially around Hawaii here. But a bit shallower, you do have uh, zoanthids that will parasitize and grow over bamboo corals primarily. Sometimes from noahs, but usually bamboo corals. Oh, wow. Look yeah. at that. There's so many. But these are more more similar in nature okay, to go anemones. Wide. But um, yeah, some, some of their group are called corals. But often parasitic, often uh, opportunistic, taking advantage of wounds or um, damage to the coral colonies to establish and then they just kind of take over over time. It is very hard to keep anything in the zoom bank here. We can slow down the ship. What are we moving? It's so slow. <laughs> <laughs> Zero point two. <laughs> I think. Are we are, well, are we, they moving in steps? What's going on? Yeah, we're moving in steps, but we're thirty meters from the end of the steps, so we could always kind of just end our step and poke around before starting our next step. We wanted to slow down the cadence. Oh, well, we've got a half an hour, right? We do have that extra half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting high enough density here. Something we may want to poke around. So yeah, let's let's run out this move and see where we're end up. Okay. Steve, were you looking in the Argus view? Yep. I saw that too. I don't know if it was a crinoid or something. I like no, bobbing sure. up in there. They have left us. Yeah.
Can we take a look at this sparsely branching colony on the right hand side here? Can you circle? Yep. Okay. Sparsely yep. branching bamboo. Yes. I'm gonna kinda aim for one of those nodes uh, where it branches off just okay. to see what Go for polyps zoom. look like. I'll get in closer. Mm. Have no fear. They look all closed up. Yeah, that's that's good. That's kind of what we're looking for. That tells us something about their morphology. Yeah, they're facing downward, right? Um, yeah, that is unique. Um, I I don't. It, it says more about how the sclerites are arranged in their body walls uh, than about the coral itself. Um, I mean, that is something also diagnostic. Are you getting what you need here? Yeah, this is great. Okay, go wide. Like that brittle star is just cleaning up on that one stock. Yeah, those, um, they're called Ophiocanthids. They're a family of brittle stars, very spiny. Um, and they're often associated with these bare patches of tissue. I, I've always assumed that it's the spines that's causing some sort of abrasion that the coral doesn't like. But just as easily, we find that these ophiocanthids will just jump off the colony randomly, um, possibly sensing some sort of change in pressure associated with you know, the vehicle barreling down on them. is going to be uh, quite the task for the annotators seeing <laughs> a, a lot, lot of stuff of, to identify a lot of diversity yeah go for zoom oh dead sponge You can push in a little further, wondering what this little teeny weeny one is. Oh yeah. Look at is that like a baby precious or something? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Are oh more zoanthids? Yeah, that one's again completely taken over. It looks like it was probably uh, one of these golden cor golden corals in a past life. Um, okay, go wide. The zoanthids don't really lay down much of a uh, thick tissue or um, large skeleton. So you can often make out the previous resident. Looks like substrates turn into these kind of sheet flows here. Maybe a very low relief. The ship's coming to a stop. Pillowy, yeah, things, but definitely flat, flatter. Maybe some nodules and pockets. Small grain size nodules. Probably a good example of predation on this bamboo coral coming up. Uh, which one? This one here. Oh yeah, okay. Looks like it had something on it in the past. Something's ta something else has taken advantage of that wound. Go for zoom. Very nice. 
Got a new black coral too that I haven't seen before in the foreground oh, here. Right at the base there? Yep, yeah, it's um, uh, Umbella pathies. Yeah, so then this bamboo coral got um, some bare patches uh, along with some of these hydroids seem to be taking over. This one looks more like a, a J-clade, possibly something similar to Jason Isis. The coral might be regrowing uh, a little bit to try and recover some of this uh, colony, but it's been pretty pretty well grazed down, I would wager, by sea star or something. You can go push in a little further. That's something I've always been very interested in is uh, what regrowth on these things look like. Sometimes they regrow just right along the axis that they okay, were. Go wide. Um, they gave up kind of regaining lost ground um, provided that it's not colonized by something else like a, uh, a hydroid or a zoanthid. Oftentimes the coral will lose that, that round. But it's not like a tree, right, where it needs like the base to be healthy in order to have like the leaves be healthy? Yeah, not immediately. Like it doesn't need like circulation or something in the same way that a tree does. So you right. can have that base be grazed down and potentially still have a healthy, healthy corals on it. Is yeah. That, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the base provides the support. So over time, if this is a persistent thing, um, or it's not able to recover, um, it's lost ground, the seawater, um, and other potential bio, bio eroders could um, undermine the coral, in which case that would be bad for the whole colony. Um, if your base goes out, uh, your whole colony is going to go out. And uh, once you're on the floor, there's really not much that can be done. You're probably going to get picked apart by grazers, Go for zoom. predators. Yeah, awesome. Hemicorallium, some uh, Chrysogorgia colonies. This one might actually be uh, one of two species, kind of has this characteristic puff, tuft of polyps, uh, Chryseus or Stellata, Polyopagon, or sponge of the cruise for the last expedition. Golden coral with zoanthids. Yep. Yeah. You can tell the, the brittle star hasn't noticed much. Someone's taken over house I look at the connection that the polyopagon has with the rock yeah yep. it's like webbing or like um yeah. fibrous glass fibers right glass. yeah that's incredible they almost look like like the bissel threads that mussels have you know okay go wide yeah but you're right glass um, crazy mm -hmm. so this is this is kind of where we got settled out and it doesn't look like it has as much like density as those areas that we had been hoping to poke around in. Yeah. Should we keep moving? Let's keep going. Took a chance. Yep. But uh, yeah. I think it, it'll kind of do this terracing thing for for a little bit. A few hundred meters, yeah. Bridge nav. I'll come back into the nodules again. One hundred meters bearing two three zero. like gravel sized nodules fish nope precious coral 